Okay, um, in this video, um, I want to quickly talk about uh, how to convert a uh, stress strain curve into uh, more circles, such that we can do more circles analysis uh, after performing a triaxial test results. Uh, on the screen, we are seeing a uh, stress strain curve here from unconfined compression tests, a very typical stress strain curve, which peak at 100 kilopascals. And since this is a uh, unconfined compression test, so the sigma three equals to zero, everything in kilopascal, and uh, uh, sigma one in this case kilopascals again is equals to hundred uh, k uh, kp eight. Uh, so those are the uh, test results from the triaxial test. Now with those informations, we want to construct a more circles. Um, remember, uh, we go back to C366 on our cast lecture. Um, we talk about um, how to uh, looking at, at, at salt elements, uh, knowing sigma 1 and sigma 3, and then we uh, formulate uh, everything, uh, solving for the statics, x, y, uh, directions, so vertical, horizontal directions, uh, through those like uh, static equations, uh, solve for equilibriums. We can rewrite our uh, equations into a circle format. So uh, after that, like this is our circle equations, uh, indicating where we can find the center radius in terms of sigma 1 and sigma 3. So for me, uh, more details, please go back to C366 uh, lecture 10. Uh, so now knowing the center can be represented by uh, one half of sigma one plus sigma three, uh, the x coordinate of the, of the center, and the radius is uh, one half sigma one minus sigma three. So we go back to our spare sheet, uh, we can formulate our center uh, x directions and also the center sorry, y coordinates and also the radius. And knowing that uh, the x is equals to one half times uh, sigma one plus sigma three. And we know the uh, y coordinates is equal to zero uh, for the uh, center of the more circles that we're going to construct. And the radius is equals to one half of the uh, sigma one minus sigma three. Again, where does the sigma one come from? It's from this, uh, any stress strain curve. In this case, uh, uh, I make a simple number there, 100 kilopascals. Uh, whatever you measure, could be 200, 250, and so on and so forth. And sigma three is the confining stress. Uh, uh, I, I, again, it's like a based on uh, what type of testing you have. Uh, for this case, it's uh, unconfined compressions. We don't have the confining stress. So sigma three equals zero. But if you have those advanced uh, triaxial tests where you do have a uh, confining stress, the number will change, like the CD or the CU test, the consolidated drain, the consolidated undrained test. So uh, knowing this, the uh, the more circles, uh, centers, and the uh, radius, now we are ready to construct our circles. Uh, so since this is a half circles, so uh, so when we make up our uh, angles, we go uh, all the way from 1 to 180. So we don't need to go to 360 since this is only half circles uh, for uh, for geotechnical applications. So we go all the way up to uh, 180. Then we construct uh, we change everything in radians. And we tell our sine and cosine functions in Excel. So we change this in the polar coordinates. Um, so we do the uh, sine functions of the radians times the radius and then plus the uh, offset signs uh, for the y uh, coordinate and don't forget to anchor 
the radius and the center of coordinates. And we do the same thing uh, for the cosine. So we go to cosine times the uh, radius and then uh, times the, uh, oops, I'm sorry, the cosine times the uh, angle radians, cosine phi times the uh, radius. We can anchor this one and then pass the center. So with that, uh, we can construct uh, our um, uh, circles. So we can plot it out now. So if we plot an X uh on the curve, uh, we know our slack our, slack our data. The X uh, is the cosine. The y is the side in terms of the polar coordinates. Then this is this is your uh, more circles, uh, and this is the signal one here. So we can check ourselves for our understanding on uh, on geotechnical applications. So this is our sigma one which is uh, equals to 100 kilopascals in this case. And this is our sigma 3. Right there, this case is equal to 0. Uh, and this represents the undering shear strength, which is the radius of our mole circles. And again, like uh, undering shear strength uh, is, is, is the radius, uh, not the diameter in terms of the uh, mole circles. So undering shear strength, uh, it's not this point. This this point is uh, on a stress strain curve. This is a common uh, a misunderstanding. Uh, when you have a stress strain curve, the the, the uh, maximum point uh, is not the undering uh, shear strain. It's the maximum compressive strain. And through the mole circles right here, so uh, the x-axis. Uh, if you try to finish this whole thing, so the x-axis is the uh, sigma. Uh, in terms of uh, kilopascal, uh, and the y-axis is the shear stress tau. So, uh, and the maximum undering shear strength uh, is the radius of our mole circles in terms of the uh, in terms of the tau tau max, not the uh, uh, maximum compressive strength, the sigma one max there, and. Uh, this is heavy in a way that uh, once you uh, create the uh, mole circles in Excel, uh, you have other test results. In this case, if you have a uh, confining stress, uh, you could change. And uh, this method allows you to uh, do analysis. Uh,